and welcome to Off the Fence, brought to you in association, of course, with Ball Sports. And this is our Cheltenham Festival Day 2 preview show. And we are recording this these as soon as we can, really. And so we're recording this on Monday night, just to timestamp it in case anything happens throughout the course of Tuesday and you wonder why we're not talking about it. It's because we're trying to get these out to you as quickly as possible after declarations. So recording this on Monday night. And of course, I'm joined by Barry Geraghty and Tony Keenan to preview the action for the Wednesday of the Cheltenham Festival Queen Mother Champion Chase Day, a day actually, Barry, that's been good to you in the past. Would this have been your favourite day of Cheltenham by the time you wrapped up there? Yeah, no, it was a good day. I enjoyed it. Um, I was lucky enough <laughs> for the Cheltenham Chase. Uh, Moscow won it twice. I won it with Sprinter, Finian's Rainbow and Big Zeb. So no, it was, it was a lucky one for me. Decent roll of honour that. Tony, does day two of Cheltenham, has that been as kind to you as it has to Barry through the years in a different way? <laughs> I don't I don't know. Uh, Friday is always my favourite day, actually. I, I like the Gold Cup day, but uh, I think I'm in the minority with that. Most people seem to like the either the Tuesday or the Wednesday, I think. N not too many people voting for the tours, though. No, no, funny that. But this th this time, Thursday's going to be an absolute cracker. Uh, let's get stuck in to looking at day two. And of course, we are kicking off with the Gallagher's Novices Hurdle, the two and a half mile hurdle race. And you know it by now, this is the chosen race for Ballyburn, who's very short up at the top of the market, taking on the stable mate, Il Atlantique, who's always had this really as his goal. Predators gold then in their um, handstands for the Ben Pauling team has had a few mentions on this show courtesy of Barry Geraghty so let's come to you first Barry um I know you're a big fan of Bally Byrne but he's very short and I'm hoping you're still going to give a positive mention for handstands yeah definitely um but Bally Byrne is very short but you know he's, he's by far and away the one to beat I think he's the he's the top novice in any division he could win the two mile two and a half or three mile I think um so he's going to be very hard to beat so the, the alternative for me is handstands put up a good performance last time especially uh, at Huntingdon in the Sydney Banks so he it, he's a horse who I think will progress and, and will keep improving so he's a horse with potential I'm not saying he's going to beat Ballyburn but I think he's good he's good each way value but I would have a lot of respect for Willie's other runners in Atlantique and Predators Gold I think if Predators Gold <clears throat> settles better I think he could fare well it, it's, it's a competitive race but the winner or the favourites sort of say stands out do you believe the hype, Tony, when it comes to Ballyburn? There's been so much chat about him. Of course, we've only seen him up at grade one level once. Are you on the Ballyburn train? Ah, I probably am. I, I think he'll, he'll win. Um, this race has become vastly more interesting now that eight have been declared to me, and I'm sure every other each way punter in the in the universe. Um, look, it's it's next to impossible to have a a, a, a kind of a disadvantageous each way bet in this race and then even better you've got the champion chase which is a totally similar setup so it, it, to me it's just a case of pick your each way horse put them into a couple of multiples um, and just hold your breath and hope that the eight kind of stand your ground this is obviously brilliant each way because it's effectively a seven runner race there the, the rag is a thousand on the machine so all you need to do is get one into the three um, the one I would come down on in terms of betting each way and putting into the multiples would, would, would be um, Predator's Gold like Barry's mentioned there, I I, I think with him, um, just as has running two races that that were probably suboptimal the last twice. He he went to two miles at Christmas and then he went up to two six, um, at the DRF. So I'd say the Goldilocks horse, probably the Goldilocks trip back down to two and a half, is probably going to suit him, um, best of all. I'd be quite happy, um, standing with him. He's kind of I think he's on official ratings. He's second top. He's kind of rated one fifty. Um, there's a few of the like handstands there. Uh, likeable horse but he, he would even have a stone to find on official ratings with Predator's goal he has the grade one form he has the solidity to him I think if things go right he'll probably be hard enough to knock out of three Okay, positive nods then for Predators Gold, Danny Mullins in the saddle. Uh, let's move on, Tony, to the Brown Advisory. We've been talking about Novice Chase Division. Obviously, it's been, I think, I think it's going to turn out to be an above average year for the Novice Chasers. And one of the stars is, of course, Factor File, who tops this market, um, was flagged up pretty early for Willie Mullins that this is where he'll be coming. Um, but he's got to take on Stay Away Faye for Paul Nichols, previous festival winner, and of course, Monty Starr as well. Um, you know I'm a huge Factor File fan, but I've, I'm now starting to think this race is a, is deeper than I thought it was going to be. I don't think it's quite as straightforward as just Factor File wins. 
No, he, he has five half-decent opponents here. I think the absence of Broadway by now is a big negative for stay away or at least a negative for stay away because with Broadway by he was almost certain to have to make it a test. Um, does stay away fee, would he prefer a bit of a lead? I see he's wearing the first-time cheek piece. I think you, did you flag that last week, that that was kind of a possibility. Um, yeah. I, I've kind of cooled a little bit on him now in the absence of Nigel Twist and Davis. I don't think I'm going to get too involved in, in this race. Um, especially with these E3 opportunities in the earlier and later races. I, I, I would give us... I'm probably going to have something win only on American Mike. Um, not a horse that I, I kind of have been a, really a fan of all along, but just looking back at his Nav and win, um, like a, Nick Rocket would have been a horse with a good reputation, l- looked on the up going into the, the, the 10 up at Navin, and I thought he was ridden kind of better than... Um, American Mike, American Mike kind of went, went up into the teeth of the pace, I'd say, sooner than he did, and was still able to kind of repel Nick Rocket. Now, I suppose the question is, what was he doing between the last two? Was he idling or was he having a think about it? And if he was idling, it's a very good performance. I do have suspe- suspicions that maybe he was having a little bit of a think about it, but at double figures, he's not the worst um, kind of small win only bet. Like, fact, the fail is a horse I was kind of keen to get against, but I'm not sure it has. It, it is the deepest race now, and I think that the pace scenario is probably suit maybe fact the fail more so than some of these other uh, strong stay types. Okay, that is interesting. Barry, when two things I've picked up from the, dare I say, preview show circuit, and I'm doing my inverted commas there. Uh, one was the Paul Nichols angle with the cheap pieces. He was very sort of engaged with this idea of putting the cheap pieces on Stay Away Fay just to help him travel that fraction better. And he was very... They, they tried them on him on Saturday. He's obviously taken them to them well. So that is interesting. And the other thing that I was quite taken aback by was when I did a preview piece with Rachel Blackmore, which aren't that common, and it's good to get a chat with her about these rides. She was very, very keen on this Monty star. And I sort of opened up the conversation, all guns are blazing for fact to file. But she was keen to sort of show her... Um, yeah, how positive she was in regards to Monty Star. Can you see the angle in with him, maybe? They put in a good performance last time, but I think on what he's done to date, he needs to he needs to be better than that. Um, personally, I'm a big Factifile fan. Um, <laughs> I just think the performance he put in, especially the last day, both his performance, and even he has the benefit of a third run when he finished second to American Mike first, but he improved massively from that. Um, but no, for me, I think he's going to be hard to beat. And then for a lot of the reasons that Tony mentioned with Broadway Boy out of this, it takes the intensity or the pace potentially. Um, Stay Away Faye has the cheap pieces to try and help him, you know, maintain a stronger pace, if you like, to find a hole in fact to file. But he's going to lack the company. But to me, you know, he, he ran a good race in the in the in the, the Cotswolds chase at Cheltenham against seasoned horses and it was a good run, but I'm just don't I'm not fully convinced that he has the pace to match Factofile and I think Factofile is just he's just a different level, I feel. Okay. Well, I hope you're right. And I'm as you know, a big Factofile fan as well, but don't know these like positive murmurs i suppose that's what the Cheltenham festival is all about uh let's move on barry to the coral cup uh deep handicap here as you would expect nearly a full field 25 lining up for the coral cup and it's sam majest who's up at the top of the market for your old boss of course jp mcmanus willie mullins training this one uh taking on dolly the great for your other previous boss sort of with nikki henderson uh is next best in the market you've got built in ballymore in there as well langa dang uh festival favorite for the skeletons so this is as competitive as you would expect for a race like this but we've got a pretty clear-cut favorite up up there at the top of the market yeah he's a solid favorite and um, but he beat noble yates on heavy ground over two and a half miles that would leave as many questions as answers and um, noble yates obviously went on and won in cheltenham but i'm just not fully convinced you saw the best of noble yates that day that sam just has potential and he's he's a worthy favorite if you like on the book but I'm just not fully sure about it either. Langadan is here running off the same mark as last year, which is obviously, that's interesting. And Doddy, Doddy the Great, he's there as well after a good run in Newbury, stepping up and trip. But I'm going to stick with the one I've been fancying all week. It's Jigaro, or Jigoro, should I say. Um, he has four runs over hurdles. He's been placed by Tully Hill, uh, Mystical Power. But he's, all those four runs were over two miles. He's stepping up to two mile five. I think that's going to suit him a lot. Um, and for me, he'd be a nice each way bet because it is competitive, it's wide open, lots with chances, um, but I think he's one who just, he could be ahead of the game and he's a nice bet for a nice each price. Um, Tony, is the Coral Cup a race you have got involved with yet or are planning on getting involved in? 
No, I, I have got involved. Yeah, just I think Barry has covered Sam and Jess quite well there. Um, it's just hard to know what he actually achieved in Limerick. Of those that also at the front of like Lang Langer Dan has bled this season, which is a little bit disconcerting. Built by Ballymore, looking at him at uh, Punchestown in the last day, he has the look of a horse that it's going to be a three mile soft ground chase or gets a bit behind the bridle. I'm just not sure those types of horses really win the Carl Cup. So of those at the front end, I'd say Dory the Great is the most solid, uh, really good run in the bet fair. Um, just looked like he was crying out for an extra distance and that, that form has obviously worked out. But the, the, my main bet in the race is going to be Guard Your Dreams. Um, look, he, he's a kind of a, was a 147 horse at his best and kind of all through the 21-22 the season he just ran to that mark every single day whether it be kind of real keel hurdles, international hurdles, all, all these races. Just kept doing it and now he's down to 137. Now, there is a, a doubt like whether he's is he near the level of what he was, but I, I think a 20 25 to 1, I would definitely be willing to take a chance because there has been enough in his two runs this season to suggest that there, there's a little bit of fire in the belly yet. Done behind Lossie Mount on Trials Day, um, again, steadily run race was, was never really going to suit, but he actually finished off his race quite well. And then he went to Encanton for the King. Well, and again, I just don't think that's a suitable test at all. I think being soft, really soft ground, and kind of the track. And again, two miles, not really ideal. I think up to two and a half. Um, he's a very good record at the track. The handicapper is one of these older English horses that the handicapper is given a real chance to. And I kind of be just keen to, 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 to have a few quid each way on him at 20, 25 to one. Of the other ones there, there's one other outsider I'd give a little bit of a chance to. That's the Capo Glory. It's in the Butler Yard and Ireland, Small Yard and that. Um, his kind of two and a half mile form is really, really solid. Um, he was toward in the Vine Hordle the last to come back to that in the second, second to Grange Clare West to Punchestown. He beat Ash Three Meadow over two and a half miles over in the Hordle race and he won a good handicap Hordle in Cork, you know, against a course specialist. Um, so I think he's a lot of runs of two miles, it probably isn't his ideal trip. I think two and a half is much more his thing. I, I thought it's Nav in the last day. Like, um, they've had a claimer riding this lad all, all along and JJ Slavin took over. Um, I thought he didn't give it the best ride. I thought, I, I thought, um, I thought, I thought he was trying to ride Richard Blackmore's horse kind of on the way in, to be honest. I, I don't know, does that ever kind of work when you're trying to, to put another horse in bother? Um, you just finished up on balancing your own horse. And I think with him, he kind of finished up hitting the front too soon. He kind of got the lead three out at Navin, which is now kind of on the turn in. Um, didn't really suit the horse. I think he's a horse that kind of needs to be dropped late. And I think kind of the, the seven pound claimer, who has little to no experience with Cheltenham, it might just be better because he does know the horse um, um, a little bit better. And also the seven pounds is, is a help. And, and I think this is a good addition for him. Is, is the first time cheek pieces because um, he is a little bit of a Larry sort. Like he only just got up in the line of Cork to win that race in January time. But yeah, I think he, he's going to be a, a kind of a big price, twenty three to one there. Kind of general, they're going to be bigger on the exchanges. So yeah, they're having something small on him. But Gary to Dreams would be the main player. Okay, a couple of names though thrown into the mix. Now, uh, Tony, I will stick with you for the feature race on day two, which is, of course, the Queen Mother Champion Chase, as already discussed with Barry. And again, this is a race where we've got the dead eight. So very much fingers crossed for eight to be lining up on the day. Nothing to happen to them in between now and then. El Fabiolo, of course, is your favourite, taking on John Bon, Edward Stone, Captain Guinness, Elixir de Nuts, and then bigger prices thereafter, the likes of Gentleman Demi, Boot Hill, etc. So I will start with you, Tony, here for this feature race, because does the eight mean that you found a different way to play it? Oh, yeah, for sure. El Fabiolo, very much the one to beat, and I wouldn't blame anyone for putting him and Pally Bourne into multiples, if, if that's your thing. But I'd be more looking to put Predator's Gold in with Captain Guinness here, I think. I think it's a race with oh. quite a lot of poten potential for chaos. Um, you have a lot of pace in it. You have a few horses that aren't the most wonderful jumpers. You have a few horses coming into it of falls or patchy jumping performances. Like Edward Stone is going to be up there. I think Alan King has said that. I think to be wasting his great attributes be dropping him in. Elixir Nuts will surely be up there. His jumping, I know he was the best of a bad lot. In the Clarence House, the last day, gentleman, the me can hit one. John Bon is little bit to prove in that regard. He won't be far away. Captain Guinness is not without his concerns. Um, he did have a, a arterial fibrillation issue there at Christmas, but I thought he, he bounced back to some degree um, the last time in the Dublin chase, giving kind of a quiet ride, I think a ride that was kind of all with an eye to this race rather than actually winning at Leperstown. And I think he has a good reasonable record here at, at the track he's placed in this race last season. And I think if, uh, of the ones that are going to be ridden forward, like it's possible they'll shoot the bolt early and he'll probably be ridden for a place. So I think the place part of his... Uh, kind of 12, 14, 16 to 1 prices is uh, overpriced. 
Yeah, I like it. Captain Guinness to pick up the pieces in behind El Fabiolo. Do you like that angle, Barry, or have you looked elsewhere yourself? No, I, I can see where Tony's coming from, but I suppose Captain Guinness for me is he's fallen short at this level so many times. It's, it's hard to have faith in him coming through. But you can see the angle Tony's coming from with the pace. Um, but as I mentioned before, Alan King did say he wasn't fully convinced Alan, that Edward Stone would necessarily be ridden this way um, come Cheltenham. That doesn't mean that he would drop him in. But um, if Alexa the Nuts goes forward, um, John Brown could be reasonably be handy. I'd say Edward Stone could sit third or fourth. And just find a nice spot there behind the pace. Um, El Fabiola would be on the premises as well. So um, I'd say if the ride is just a slightly sensible race on Edward Stone, I think he'd be the one to chase home El Fabiola. So for me, he would be good each way value at his current price. Okay, on we go then to the cross country chase. Uh, it sounds like it's going to be pretty heavy in places on the cross country course. How much of an issue is that going to be for Manella Indo? Yeah, I, th I think it is a neg negative for Manila Endo, um, and likewise for Galvin as well. Um, and maybe Galvin won't even line out. Um, but who's going to play? Whose strengths will play? To for me, Coco Beach. He's got form uh, over the banks in Punchestown, um, and he's a good winner of the Tritown back in November, beating Limerick Lace. That's very solid form. So for me, that's the best current race form, if you like, non cross country form. Manila Endo had a nice run in Cheltenham, got a feel for the fences, but he is a horse on the way down. Um, Likewise, you could say the same for Galvin, who I think will struggle with the ground. And Delta Work has been chasing around in cross-country race. So I don't think he's quite the horse he was. Where for me, um, I think that Coco Beach, he maintains that level of ability. And he does have form on soft ground. So he would be the one for me here. Tony, is the cross-country race something you ever tend to get involved in? Is it a race you like or not? I know it's a bit niche. No, but no. Might. No, it's not. It just it wouldn't be enough for them to, to bet on in the, in the year or in the season. But again, just to point out that some bookmakers are going the four places here, which added to what you have in the earlier races. Again, look at it. It's 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 made for an each way bet, and plus the fact that it's quite a tin race, really. There there are kind of big priced outsiders here. You probably wouldn't give much of a chance. Like the first five or six would probably have it between them. Okay, well, I will stick with you then, Tony, for the Grand Annual. Now, this is a race I can safely admit that I have never, ever got even close to getting right or having a handle on at any point throughout the season. Have you? <laughs> no, not a strong handle. Look, I, I would have been of the view that maybe Mascada is a little bit better than what she has shown this season, the tactics um, and maybe the, the kind of type of race she's been running in, not ideal. But look, you're having to take quite a short price now. I didn't expect her to see her kind of mid-single figure price here. That that's a little bit skinny. The one that interests me a little bit, um, but it only would be a little bit, is unexpected party. Like I know every horse is aimed at Cheltenham, but but he's really aimed at it now. He's running a lot of unsuitable races this season, between um, two and a half mile races, and then he ran in the Sandown Grade One, the Henry the Henry the Eight. He was kind of gunned out in front. That doesn't really suit him. Um, just missed the cut for this race last season. I think he actually might be lower in the weights, or at least a broadly similar mark. I could see maybe a year later the, the kind of plan working out on him run at least a bit of a race um, for a trainer who obviously is very keen to target handicaps at the meeting. Absolutely, yeah. unexpected party currently around about the 14 to 1 mark with ball sports for the Dan Skelton operation. Um, Barry, what about you in the Grand Annual? Yeah, tricky enough race. Uh, St. Rao would be there with a chance, uh, likewise Liberty Hunter. Um, but the one I like is Harper's Brook. He got £4 for winning a good handicap, I thought, in Sandown last time. He has first-time cheek pieces. I was fancying the horse who was going to be involved and came down at the last in Excelsis Deo, but uh, he isn't declared, so I'm uh, switching my hope now to Harper's Brook instead. Harper's Brook, God, yeah. I don't know, you'd be watching through your sort of behind the back of the sofa type job with him, but he clearly has ability. Um, let's move on to the bumper, Tony, because uh, Jasmine DeVoe and uh, Jalon Duderis are up at the top of the market as they have been for a while. But of course, the horse that you gave such a positive shout to weeks ago, the Yellow Clay, is around about the 10 to 1 mark now with Ball Sports. Again, time stamped, Monday night recording. Um, but nothing to put you off the yellow clay at this stage, Tony? 
Well, uh, I, I think I would have preferred to see Jack Kennedy uh, pick him, but uh, I think that was always a little bit fanciful. Uh, he looks towards, stri towards string on the jockey bookings. But look, the, the yard have got three of the top five in the betting, and there's not a huge amount between them. A decision you know, was always going to kind of be a tough one. And I suppose you've, you've the, the, the Jiggins and Horse have been really impressive, and Romeo Curlio seems to have a big reputation. No, I'll, I'll, I'm not sure the yellow clay is going to be good enough um, because it's a race full of progressive types, and you would think that something is going to improve past them. But I do think at the moment he's got the best form. He should have been second in the Future Stars at the Dublin Racing Festival with kind of things going wrong. And he himself does have scope to improve. He was off a break then. Um, he was carrying double penalty. The race didn't go his way. I think he'd probably be better on a bit of better ground. And I know there's been rain now, but from here on in, it's it's to be um, quite dry. And this will be kind of the, the, what, the 14th race of the meeting. So it shouldn't be too bad. I, I'm, I'm happy enough with, with kind of when I put him up. And I don't think he's too bad at 10 to 1 at the moment. But very, very deep race, full of potential. And there's, there's loads of other ones you would give chances to. But I'm happy enough just to stick with him. I'll probably throw a dart at one or two other ones on the day. Like Fleur de Vassil was a horse that was quite impressive. Um, in winning the mayor's bumper at the Dublin Racing Festival. She's another one of these Mullins horses in the first time hoods, but yeah, yellow clear do me anyway. And what about you, Barry? You've got an ear to the ground. Come on, the bumper. What have you heard? Who's got an absolute rocket, the proper rocket? <laughs> Well, the horse I was liking was Romeo Coolio, um, and his form was franked by Sporting Glory, who was runner up to him, um, and he went on to win in Ferias the last day. Um, but I was sitting beside Gordon at a preview at a local uh, GAA club, Dunshockton, and uh, he mentioned Romeo Coolio. I got a really good impression of him on his work. His only concern would be that um, the occasion doesn't get to him. So that's his worry, just that he can keep him settled. He has Keith Donahue on board, very experienced rider and a very good man to settle a horse. So I'd be happy to stick with Romeo Coolio. I just get a, get a good impression that he's a horse with a lot of potential. But as Tony said, there's lots here with potential without maybe there being a standout horse at this stage. But I'd say by, by Wednesday evening, we might know of a standout horse. Exciting times. Look, boys, thank you very much, as always. That, of course, was our day two preview. But by the time we're looking at day three tomorrow, we will have plenty of action to dissect because, of course, we'll have had the action from Tuesday at the Cheltenham Festival. So we'll be looking back at that and then we'll also be looking ahead to Thursday's card. So stay with us throughout the week for our Off the Fence daily shows coming your way. Myself, Barry Garrity and Tony Keenan. Good luck tomorrow for all of you watching now. Uh, go well. And thank you very much for watching. That was Off The Fence.